Peace and blessings to all my brothers and sisters out there going through the struggle. I hope and pray you all are having a wonderful day today. Thank the Most High God. He allowed us to wake up and see another day with his precious breath of life. Truly a blessing, right? Man, a lot of people didn't make it to see this day. So we are blessed. But we do have purpose. And that's proof in the pudding. Today, I'm not going to be long with it. I'm going to keep my word. Today is about light afflictions. You ever go through something? You ever, you ever have your car break down? You ever uh, be short on your bill? You ever, uh, man, go through something and you wonder why you're going through that? Then you get through it. The Lord allow you to get through it. And then it, later on down the line, it happens again. And you're like, man, why am I, why am I continuing? Why do I keep going through this stuff? That's a question I ask. Why do I keep going through this stuff? Maybe, just maybe, you're not serving God right. <laughs> Proof is in the pudding. I am a walking example. I am a living witness, a living testimony. When you ain't serving God right, you're going to go through more than just light afflictions. You're going to go through all kinds of stuff until you start serving the true and living God the way he said to do it in the Bible. So if you got your Bibles, because believe it or not, God is in control of everything. Remember, Satan couldn't touch Job unless the Lord allowed. So we have to be mindful of spiritual things. Got Spiritual fallen angels all over this planet vexing us. So we have to get in line with the word of God for our protection. Because if God is in control, why not have him on our side to help us fight through these battles? 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians 4 beginning with verse 17. Verse 17 and 18. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, oh, so the Lord is merciful and gracious. He is not going to keep letting us go through things unnecessarily all the time if we serve him. It says, but our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Verse 18. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. The God we serve, can we see him? The God we serve, is he not eternal? Man, we can't see him, but he's coming back. Isaiah 48. Go to a more sure word of prophecy. Isaiah 48. What is that? Hmm. Isaiah 48, beginning with verse 9. Isaiah 48 and verse 9. For my name's sake will I defer mine anger. See the Lord, he, he got he got something about his people, but he ain't gonna keep his anger forever. And for my praise will I refrain for thee that I cut thee not off. Whoa, what does that mean? Say he don't want you to he don't want to take you out. He don't want no man to die. Behold, I have refined thee. But not with silver, I have chosen thee in the furnace of affliction. Whoa, we chosen. But because our forefathers messed up, he said he chose us in the furnace of affliction. And that's light afflictions 
compared to what the Lord went through for us. He came and died for us. He was tortured, maimed, all so we can get access to eternal life. All, we, all so we can get our spiritual bodies and be like him, which was the original plan. See, I have chosen thee in the furnace of affliction for mine own sake, even for mine own sake will I do it. For how should my name be polluted? Because we named after him. Read Isaiah 49. We are named, we are surnamed Israel, and I will not give my glory to another. Mm. Verse 12. Hearken unto me, O Jacob, and Israel, my call. Many are called, few are chosen. We got to be part of the few. Because the whole world ain't keeping his word. <laughs> I am he. I am the first. I am also the last. Who is that? Alpha and Omega. The beginning and the end. That's Jesus. Matthew chapter 5. Matthew 5. Matthew 5. Verses 11 and 12. Matthew 5, verse 11 and 12. Verse 11. Blessed are ye. What? We blessed. <laughs> but pay attention. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute, persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my name's sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. They persecuted Jesus. They persecuted the prophets. They persecuted the disciples. So we're going to go through some things. Matter of fact, the Bible says, all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Because he suffered for us. He paid the ultimate price. Moving on. John 15 and one verse here. John 15 and verse 20. Remember the word that I said unto you. The servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. We're not greater than God. So if he went through things, we're going to go through some things. However, if we're not serving him correctly, according to his word, we're going to go through some more things. It's just that simple. So we're not greater than him, and we're going to go through some things. So if we serve him the right way, according to what's written, then all we will have is light afflictions. Not, not all that crazy stuff that, that we used to go through when we was out there in the world. Hebrews 12. Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews 12 and beginning with verse 5. Hebrews 12, beginning with verse 5. Verses 5 through 9. And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord. Because... Mm. The Lord may be, if you're going through some things, the Lord may be whooping you. Guilty. The Lord may be whooping you till you get it right. However, he's merciful. He don't want you to die. He don't want you to die in your sins. You got to change your ways. You got to turn to him. Verse 6. No, let me finish verse 5. It says, And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children, my son. Despise not the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. For whom the Lord loveth, he chastens. Oh, and scourges every son whom he receiveth. Verse 7. If ye endure chastening, because didn't Jesus say, he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. If you endure chastening, God dealeth with you as sons, as with sons. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? Verse 8. But if ye be without chastisement, Whereof all are partakers, then are ye bastards and not sons. Whoa. Verse 9. For, furthermore, 
we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us. That's right. And we gave them reverence. That's right. We did what they said do, right? We did what our fleshly fathers did. Why is it so hard for us to obey our spiritual father? Hmm. That's a good question. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the father of spirits and live? That's right, because all over the Bible, when you read keeping the commandments, it give you long life. It will be blessings more abundantly. But a lot of us don't want to do that. Isaiah 65. Isaiah chapter 65. I'm almost done. Bear with me, y'all. Isaiah 65, beginning with verse 2. I have spread out my hands all the day unto a rebellious people. Uh, ain't that us? Ain't that true, Israel? We rebel against the Lord. The only one that's going to save us. Let me read that again. I have, I have spread out my hands all the day unto a rebellious people, which walketh in the way that was not good after their own thoughts. Oh, not after the Lord's thoughts. <laughs> Verse 3. A people that provoketh me to anger continually to my face, that sacrificeth in gardens, and burneth incense upon altars of brick, which remain among the graves. Oh, I did a lesson recently called Valley of Dry Bones, Dry Bones in the Valley, where they remain among the congregations of the dead, spiritually dead. <laughs> uh, verse 5. Which say, stand by thyself, come not near to me, for I am holier than thou. Oh, don't you hear that? I'm holier than you. Oh, no, brother, you ain't doing it. I'm going to go to church on Sunday. I'm going to keep the first day of the week holy. I I'm going to serve the Lord my way, and you do it your way. But there's only one way. Mm. People ain't paying their no attention. And it's going to be a sad day of judgment. <laughs> Come not near to me, I am holier than thou. These are a smoke in my nose, a fire that burneth all the day. Behold, it is written before me, I will not keep silence, but will recompense, even recompense into their bosom. Lord say he's going to pay them back. And the Lord's coming back to, for, that, for that recompense. That was, oh, I read too far. My bad. I got carried away. <laughs> uh, got to Calm my emotions now. Matthew 23. One verse. Matthew 23 and verse 37. Matthew 23 and verse 37. Now we just read, I just read in Isaiah in the Old Testament how he had spread out his hands all day long to a rebellious people after their own thoughts. Matthew 23 in the New Testament, verse 37. Oh Jerusalem, Jerusalem. Thou that killest the prophets. What? Didn't Jesus' own people kill him? Had him crucified on the cross? O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets, and stones them which are sent unto thee. How often would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathers her chickens under her wings, and ye would not. Mm. That's the story of our people. Always rebelling against the Lord. The only one that's going to save them. The only, one's the, the only one that's going to bless them more abundantly than any other nation on this planet. Whew. Deuteronomy 32. A few more and I'm almost done. Deuteronomy 32, beginning with verse 8. Deuteronomy 32, beginning with verse 8. Verse 8. When the Most High divided to the nations their inheritance. Whoa. See, we got an inheritance coming. People take that lightly. When the Most High divided to the nations their inheritance, when he separated the sons of Adam. <laughs> when he separated the sons of Adam, he set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. What number is that? Twelve. You got 12 hours in the day, 12 hours in the night, 12 months in a year. All things according to the 12 tribes of Israel, which are scattered abroad all over this planet. Verse 9, for the Lord's portion is his people, 
Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. He found him in the desert land and in the waste howling wilderness. He led him about. He instructed him. He kept him as the apple of his eye. We are the Lord's apple of his eye. <laughs> and people take that as a life thing. Please, Lord, stop that. People take that lightly. Uh, verse 11. As an eagle stirreth up her nest, fluttereth, fluttereth over her young, spreadeth abroad her wings, taketh them, beareth them on her wings. Verse 12. So the Lord alone did lead him, and there was no strange God with him. The Lord was dwelling among our forefathers, blessing them, taking out other nations, and they said, no, we want to be like everybody else. We want to have a flesh king over us, not the Lord. Moving on. That was verse 12. Verse, uh, Deuteronomy 11. Verses 1 and 2. Deuteronomy 11, verses 1 and 2. Therefore thou shalt love the Lord thy God, and keep his charge, and his statutes, and his judgments, and his commandments always. Mm. Didn't Jesus say in John 14, verse 15, if you love me, keep my commandments? A lot of people ain't keeping his commandments, so that proves what? They don't love him. Clear. Verse 2. And know you this day, for I speak not with your children which have not known and which have not seen the chastisement of the Lord your God, his greatness, his mighty hand, and his stretched out arm. Mm. <laughs> Isaiah 5. Isaiah 5, one verse here, verse 25. Isaiah 5 and verse 25. Verse 25, therefore is the anger of the Lord kindled against his people, and he hath stretched forth his hand against them, mm, and hath smitten them. And the hills did tremble, and their carcasses were torn in the midst of the streets. For all this, his anger is not turned away, for his hand is stretched out still. Say, so Lord, the Lord say, so you disobeyed me? You don't want to keep my commandments? But I still got my hand stretched out to you. I still want you to turn to me because I'm the only one that can save you. No other God, no other pagan God, no man on this earth. Now, that was Isaiah 5. Two more after this. Isaiah 9. And, and one verse here. Isaiah 9, verse 17. Isaiah 9, verse 17. Therefore the Lord shall have no joy in their young men, neither shall have mercy on their fathers and widows. For everyone is a hypocrite. Oh! Didn't Jesus say that in Matthew 23? Woe unto you scribes, Pharisees, hypocrites. Got a lot of them today. Modern day scribes and Pharisees. So-called men and women of God. But they ain't teaching his word. They come up with their own righteousness. Let me read that again. It said, for everyone is a hypocrite and an evildoer, and every mouth speaketh folly. For all this, his anger is not turned away. Mm, all this, his anger is still not turned away. But his hand is stretched out still. We got a merciful God. First Peter, back to the New Testament. This will be last. First Peter chapter 1. 1 Peter 1, beginning with verse 1. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ to the strangers, scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. Verse 2, elect, that means you chose, elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father, through sanctification of the Spirit, unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ, grace unto you. And peace be multiplied. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy, abundant mercy, hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you. Oh, it's reserved in heaven? So that means we don't have it now. Hence, nobody's saved now. 
not until the Savior returns to save us. Plain and simple. Verse 5, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. We in the last days. <laughs> Verse 6, wherein ye re greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations. Whoa! So if you are through manifold temptations, how can you be saved now? If you say you ain't going through nothing, <laughs> nothing can harm you. Man, come on. Wake up, my people. Verse 7, that the trial of your faith, we are in our trials now. That the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. At the appearing of Jesus Christ, when he makes his second coming. So that's the end of it. Light afflictions. Yeah, we go through things, but when you go through things constantly, continually, you got to examine yourself. See what you're doing. If you call yourself a servant of God and it's not lining up with this word, you got to change your ways. What is it? Romans 12, it says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good. No, I beseech you. That, let me read it right quick. I got, okay. Yeah, my bad. I don't want to twist scripture as many false prophets do. And I'm not one of them. Romans chapter 12. Let's go there right quick. Romans 12. Beginning with verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, Ab abundant mercy that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice wholly acceptable unto God which is your reasonable service and be not conformed to this world but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God <laughs> gotta change your mindset gotta change your ways cause the signs have been around us our whole life this bible has been around us around our, our whole lives and we have yet to open it up and read it for ourselves. Hmm. So, I hope you all uh, have a wonderful day. Thank God in the name of Jesus Christ, the Messiah, he allowed us to wake up and see another day. And just remember, if you're going through some things, examine yourself, make sure it's in line with the word of God. If it's not, then you know you're going to keep going through some things unnecessarily. Light afflictions. Much love. Peace.